The Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution is one of the most iconic JDM cars of all time. Using the classic Take Race inspired engine put in small car cargo fast formula, the Lancer Evolution could compete with cars much more expensive than itself and be very competitive on rally stages across the globe with meaning motorsports heritage, incredible driving dynamics, and tons of performance woven into its DNA, and the fact that they are no longer being produced. The different generations of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution are starting to become classics in the automotive world, and for good reason. But with 10 iterations of Evolution, which one of these classic rally fighting machines is the best of all? And which one is the most worth your hard-earned Dogecoin investment? Should you buy the most recent, or should you buy an early US model? Should you import a 25 year old one or hold out for one that's not quite eligible yet? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about on today's episode of what generation is best, Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. But before we jump head first into the story of how Subaru got their little asses beat, we gotta hit you with the plug. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe. Our team works extremely hard to bring you guys daily content. Give the video a thumbs up. It helps us get in front of a bunch of other car enthusiasts just like yourself. If you ever need anything, wheels, tires, or suspension, come see your boy over at FitmentIndustries.com. We have over a million different wheel and tire packages, ceramic coating, plus accessories, and a ton of hot merch. And you don't even have to wait for your delayed tax return. You can build now and pay with your tax return later with as low as 0% financing from a firm. These guys are literally rock stars. They've saved my life a couple of times. And if you like oddball cars and wanna see some behind the scenes action here at Fitment Industries, go ahead and give me a follow on the good old IG at seanb.fi. Let's get started. In 1989, Rally Art entered into the World Rally Championship with a Mitsubishi Galant VR. Four. The car won numerous events, but with increasing competition from brands like, oh, I don't know, say Subaru, the Galant just wasn't cutting it anymore. And Rally Art really wanted to step up its game by stepping down the size of its chassis. With a shorter wheelbase and less weight, the Econobox Lancer had superior turning characteristics and improved coring abilities when outfitted with the Galant VR4's 4G63T drivetrain and Rally Art race car bits all around it. The Lancer Evolution was ready to debut at the first round of the 1993 WRC, but first, they needed to produce 2,500 production cars to homologate the new evolution of the Lancer. The 1992 Lancer Evolution is naturally lightweight and featured what was essentially a detuned version of the engine that was in the Galant VR4 rally car and was making almost 250 horsepower from its 2-liter 4G63T engine. 250 horsepower in 1992, that was a really quick car, especially in a small package like this. It sounds awesome, right? Well, Mitsubishi wasn't actually so sure that they would even sell 2,500 street legal cars that would be sold as an RS trim. So they created the GSR model. Essentially, the GSR came with functional amenities like a radio, some air conditioning, and even power steering in order to appeal to a more broad audience. And it worked almost too well. In fact, Mitsubishi ended up selling all of their Evos within three days of launch and ended up producing another 2,500 units to keep up with consumer demand. The Evo 1 was a very special car that really perfected that Japanese big power Econobox and took down much more expensive cars on the street. By January of 1994, the Evo 2 would produce as many as 5,000 units. And while the car didn't seem to change much aesthetically, the wheelbase got slightly longer. The track width rose just a hair and the car sat a little taller as well. The same 4G63 would get a 10 horsepower bump and some more serious suspension tuning. But at the end of the day, the Evo 2 was really just kind of the same as the Evo 1 but a little bit better. Come 1995 though, the Evolution 3 would see even more production, pumping out 7,000 units with kind of a little bit of a facelift going on. The face shield would get much more aggressive in the name of more airflow through the coolers and different pistons would actually bring compression up to 9.0 to one over the previous eight and a half to one compression ratio. Alongside of new turbo and exhaust system power was up to 200 and 66 horsepower, although torque remained the same. Even though these changes seemed small, the Evo 3 would still out accelerate the more powerful Impreza Type RA WRX STI. The Evo 3 would become encapsulated in the minds of young enthusiasts when Initial D would introduce Emperor, an Evo only drive team led by Kyochi Sudo, who whipped around an Evo 3 like nobody's business. And then in mid 1996, we would see yet another Evo model, the Lancer Evolution 4, with a completely new platform. The Evo 4 would be 20 millimeters longer, even though the wheelbase length would 
would stay the same. It would also get slightly shorter and skinnier as well. The exterior was also updated to get a little bit more aggressive yet again, and their racier RS model would get the famous gigantic rally fog lights slapped in the front of that bumper. The 4G63 still remained, but the compression did change again and went kind of right in between the other two at an 8.8 .8 to one compression ratio. And it got a twin scroll turbo and larger coolers with some lighter weight rotating assembly component. Power is now up to 276 horsepower and the car got a rear differential with active yaw control. Essentially what this would do is add torque to the outside wheel and reduce torque to the inside wheel and help pull the car through a corner. Mitsubishi sold 9,000 units of Evo 4 with as much as 90% of those being the GSR model, interestingly enough. 1998 would be the year you start to see the trend toward the modern Evo formula. The car would not receive any more power, although changes to the turbo and the cooling system and lighter pistons yet again would make putting that power to the ground that much more efficient. New longer lower control arms would be forged aluminum, the rear spoiler was adjustable and even the hood would become aluminum to help reduce weight and also increase heat dissipation. Most of these weight savings were to counteract the vehicle getting larger. The wheelbase did not change but the body would become larger and wider with the implementation of a wide rear arch. In fact, the car became so wide that it was no longer considered to be compact by the Japanese government, which means the Evo was subject to higher taxes, making it a little harder to afford for a lot of people. The Evo 6 would come to fruition for 1999. Just receiving a new refresh to the styling, Mitsubishi really focused on improving upon the new Evo rather than changing it altogether. This really came down to increasing the cooler sizes, using lightweight materials in the engine and increasing airflow passages. Power remained the same at 276 with that 4G63, but again, it made that power more efficiently than the previous Evo 5. The chassis got a little bit stiffer and the face you changed just a little bit as well. And then this is where you kind of start to see all the special additions come around. You got the Zero Fighter, the Extreme, and the, the Tony McKinnon editions that would be set to 340 horsepower and be sold in limited quantities. The Evo would get a completely new bod for the 2001 Lancer Evolution 7 to become a little bit more sophisticated without getting rid of that instantly recognizable Evo look. Well, the new Evo 7 did gain some weight. This was counteracted by increasing the rigidity of the chassis yet again. This is also when they went to extremes to save weight in and on the engine. Mitsubishi actually decided to replace their lightweight aluminum rocker cover with a more flammable, slightly lighter weight magnesium cover. They hollowed out the camshafts and the exhaust was modified to be slightly more streamlined, all to the tune of increasing the horsepower by a whole whopping zero. Although torque was up just a wee bit. And now you could even option in an automatic transmission. This is also where you see the introduction of an active center differential that let you select modes based on what kind of activities you were partaking in and it would adjust itself accordingly. For 2003, Mitsubishi would finally bring the Evo to North America. And it actually is a pretty funny story. On launch, Mitsubishi played on the fact that the Evo 8 still had a 44 horsepower gain on the Japanese STI, almost to the point that it became a little bit bully-like. Then to Mitsubishi's surprise, about a week later, the new WRX STI would be announced with more power than the Evo and it was coming stateside as well, but still the Evo would defeat the STI on and off the track. Automotive journalists would praise the newly stateside Evo 8 for its ability to be part commuter, part rally car, and always have the ability to put a smile on their face with the quote unquote telepathic steering, violent power delivery, and breathtaking noises. And I can't disagree with them there. Just two years later for 2005, the Evo would see another facelift with various changes to mark the Evo 9's born day. Still powered by a 4G63, the Evo 9's bigger update was probably where it received variable valve timing on the intake cam, and they called this technology Mevec. And with the addition of an ever so slightly larger turbo, power was up to almost 290 horsepower. Styling wise, the Evo 9 really didn't change a whole lot. In fact, sometimes it's even hard for me to tell the difference between an eight and nine. If I call your Evo 9 and Evo 8 at a car show, I am very sorry, but maybe my favorite thing about the Evo 9 is that they made a station wagon version. Now, of course, North America would not see such a thing, but knowing it exists just, it makes my heart happy. There are not enough cool wagons out there and it's very sad. And then in 2007, Mitsubishi apparently hated everyone and decided to deliver us not the 4G63 engine and make the Evolution 10 larger in all aspects, simultaneously making it heavier without adequately approving on the power. The new 4B11T kept the same two liter displacement and now made 291 horsepower and then 311 torque. It was still quick though, doing five second sprints to 60, but it wasn't really an improvement over the last generation performance wise, but it was more friendly to 
to your everyday consumer. This was also the longest running evolution in Mitsubishi's history, with the Evo 10 spanning from 2007 to its final year of production in 2016. That's almost 10 years of straight production with no major changes. That means the Evo 10 was around almost as long as it took the Evo to run through the first through the ninth generation. It's wild. They kind of pulled that whole 370Z thing, like don't fix it if it's not broken, which sounds completely backwards to me in my head, but hey, people still bought these things all of the time. What do I know? Anyway, with 10 iterations of evolution, which Evo is the best Evo? Some would say that it's the Evo 1 that started it all and would easily take the cake. Its historical significance and outright raw DNA makes it the best and the most collectible. Or maybe it's even the Evo 3 being featured in Initial D and being a fan favorite in video games across the board. Or maybe it's even the Evo 10 for bringing the Evo to the masses with a more user-friendly configuration. Well, I don't believe that it's any of those cards because the Evo 8 is really what changed everything for the better. The Evo 8 is the card that brought a JDM Legend stateside with all kinds of major improvements. The Evo 8 was peak 4G63, that peak tuner culture. It came to fruition to shit on Subaru and take on sports cars in a price bracket that was downright affordable compared to its competition. And let's not forget the Evo 8's feature in the best Fast movie of all time, Too Fast, Too Furious. But that about wraps it up for this episode of What Generation is Best Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution Edition. We will be making more videos just like this one, so please leave a comment down below and let us know what cars you guys want to see us cover next. Make sure you guys are subscribed and getting notifications to stay in the loop with all the crazy stuff that we're doing over here. And of course, don't forget to head over to FigmentIndustries.com for any and all of your wheel, tire, and suspension needs. I'm Sean. Sean B. F. I. on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't hate me. Peace.